Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let's pray. Lord our God, as we await now the coming of your Son more imminently at Christmas, we pray that as we look at our wreath with the fourth candle burning, you would help us to prepare our hearts so that we are able to receive him with all the love and devotion we can. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We gather this week before Christmas. We come before the Lord knowing the fragility of our lives and the life of the world around us. Let's ask the Lord now to strengthen us, but most of all to forgive us when our fragility has caused us to fall, to hurt others, and to sin. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Pour forth, we ask you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, You, O Bethlehem, Ephrata, who are little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who has labor pains is brought forth. Then the rest of his brethren, shall return to the sons of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and thus shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O God, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. O oh God, bring, bring us back. Let, let your, your face, face shine on us, and, and we, we shall be saved. saved. O shepherd of Israel, hear us. Enthroned on the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse up your might and come to save us. O oh God, God, bring, bring us, us back. back. Let, let your, your face shine on us, and we, we shall be saved. saved. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. O oh God, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. May your hand be on the man at your right hand, the son of man you have confirmed as your own, and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. O oh God, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me in burnt offerings and sin offerings. You have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written before me, as it is written of me in the roll of the book. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasures in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And by that will we have been sanctified, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, once and for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there will be fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, as Advent draws to a close and the celebration of Christmas is now just days away, the scriptures try to draw us into a more immediate preparation for this time of Christmas. I want to propose that there are three things that we're invited to reflect on today as the Feast of Christmas draws closer. The first one, it seems to me, is that Christmas both awakens our deepest longings and touches our deepest fear. Christmas is a time of great hope, and there's lots of goodwill and generosity. We give and we receive gifts. And in the giving and receiving of gifts, we feel recognized, we feel appreciated, we feel that we belong. And that's one of our deepest longings. There's also plenty of hope and joy in the Christmas story. No doubt, Mary and Joseph had great hope in a life together. We know that they were engaged, and no doubt there was a giving and receiving in their relationship as well. In today's gospel, we hear of the great joy of the visit that Mary makes to Elizabeth. But that story doesn't just simply end with joy, because we know in the days ahead, things get difficult. And there is also fear. Joseph is fearful of what others might say, that this woman that he is betrothed to is pregnant. Mary is fearful as well, if you think about having no place to have your child. And yet if we watch the story carefully as it unfolds before us in these days before Christmas and indeed 
on Christmas Day itself, we will notice that despite their fear, all the characters that we come across in these days are people who trust in God because they have great faith. And it seems to me that's what we're being invited to do, to deepen in these days our trust of God, a God who loves us so much that he sends his Son incarnate to come and live among us. God can fulfill our deepest longings and also touch our deepest fears to show us that we are not alone. And so if we really want to live more deeply, if we really want Christ to be born again in us this Christmas, we too are asked to look at the longings that we have and yet also not be afraid to name our fears. The second thing is the sign spoken about by the prophet. The sign, the sign. We've heard that the whole of Advent, this will be a sign. A number of the prophets say that. We are always looking for signs. Signs that we are loved, signs that we are successful, signs of hope. Things that signify that we can be encouraged. And as Christmas approaches, I think we're being invited to sit down and look at the signs that God has been and is at work in our lives. You know, it's so easy for us to identify God's absence or the lack of God's activity. And perhaps that is even more so for us as we come to the end of a really difficult year. We thought that 2020 was a difficult year, but for many people, 2021 has been a very difficult year. In the Christmas story, there are many signs as well. The sign of Mary's visit to Elizabeth. The sign before that of the angel that visits Mary. The sign when the shepherds visit or the choirs of angels singing. And I wonder what sign God is showing us at this time. A sign of hope. A sign of encouragement. A sign that somehow we can be affirmed that God is indeed Emmanuel. God is with us. And that's the third thing I want to invite you to reflect on. Emmanuel, God is with us. What does it really mean for us to say God is with us? No matter where you are or what you've done or what you fail to do, God is with you. God is with us. That word Emmanuel, God is with us, speaks of God's identity. A God that chooses to live with his own people. Not somewhere out there, as Beth Midler tells us in her song, God is Watching Us, but God is truly with us. God chooses to live amongst us. John's Gospel affirms that, that God so loves the world that he sends his only son. And so these days of Advent, as we now enter into Christmas in just a few days, are an affirmation for us of the fact that before all else, God loves us so much that he chooses to come and live amongst us. And Christmas invites us to reclaim our identity, that we are the beloved sons and daughters of God. Let's pray today on this last Sunday of Advent that our deepest desires and deepest fears would give way to a deep hope and a deep faith and a deep trust in the God who comes to live amongst us. Let's not be afraid to look for the signs around us that affirm that God is active and present in our lives. And let's not be afraid, most of all, to hold on to, to reclaim our identity at this time, that each and every one of us 
is a beloved son and daughter of God. Each and every one of us is the place where Emmanuel, God is with us, chooses to be. Because if we can believe that God is with us, that God is Emmanuel, then indeed we will be able to celebrate this coming feast of Christmas with a great joy and hope and faith that will bring us a deep sense of peace and God's presence. So let's proclaim together now our profession of faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We have heard God's word. We now bring our own words of prayer before our God. For Pope Francis and all those who lead and inspire God's people and help them on the journey of faith, that they may continue to guide and lead in the ways of Jesus, who is Emmanuel, God with us, the one who came to serve and not to be served. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our world that government bodies may safeguard the rights and dignity of every person through the laws they enact and the policies they develop. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who find Christmas a time of difficulty rather than joy, especially children and those who are vulnerable or at risk, that they may be com comforted by God's grace working through others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all pregnant women, especially those experiencing difficulties, that they may find strength through the example of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own community of faith, that we may accept the challenge to model our lives on the life of Christ in response to his call to lead good and holy lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously Lord. hear us. For all who are sick or suffering, lonely or housebound, that they will draw hope from the coming of the Christ child. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously Lord. hear us. For our own needs, those that we've spoken out loud, those that we have in our hearts, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, these are our words of prayer. We pray that you would hear them and answer them through the Word made flesh, the one who comes to dwell among us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, 
Let's check this auto manual. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. And the Lord accepts sacrifice to your hands. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that we may find so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the cup of blessing in his hands, and confessing your mercy, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask you to accept us also together with your Son, and in the saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from ourselves and one another. May he make us, your church, a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Buti our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. 
Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It was the Lord Jesus, God is with us, who taught us to call on God as our Father. And so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.